Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of I Was There Last Night, because I was there last night. I can prove it. Here, look at that. It's a ticket. So, last night at the Ogden Theater, I saw Amon Amarth featuring um, Entombed AD and Ex Mortis. Um, so, first of all, right off the bat, I need to kind of get a couple of things off my chest. One, my voice is not that great, because obviously I went to a death metal show, and anytime you go to a death metal show, if your voice is still normal after it, you weren't screaming loud enough. Second, the show started an hour later than it was supposed to, which always annoys me. That's one of my biggest pet peeves about going to concerts, is whenever a show starts later, much later than it's supposed to, like I can get like half an hour or so, but I mean, they kept pushing it back. They're like, the doors are going to open at 7, then the doors are going to open at 8, oh, 7.30, but still, when the doors open at 7.30, then the show doesn't start till 9. So I was a little annoyed by that. But Ultimately, once the crowd was getting a little bit restless, they brought out the first band, Ex Mortis, and I'm going to say they were forgiven pretty quickly. So just to kind of go into the opening bands a little bit, I didn't know much about either of these bands. I mean, obviously I knew Entombed AD, you know, formed from the ashes of Entombed, um, long time running, you know, death metal band from Sweden. Um, so I knew about them, but I didn't know a lot of their stuff. Same thing with Ex Mortis, I didn't know anything about them. Um, and I got a lesson really quickly and very brutally, which um, they are awesome. Ex Mortis is amazing. They are extremely talented guitarists. And actually, as they were playing, I was a little bit worried that they might actually outshine the um, headlining act uh, just with their technical skills, their ability to play guitars. They have their you know lead singer, lead guitarist is a fantastic guitarist. Um, you know, they played, you know, five or six songs from, you know, their collection. I didn't know any of their songs, but I certainly was getting into them. They were just a fantastic band. They did play, the one song I did recognize is because it's a cover of, brace yourselves, Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata um, as a, um, basically a thrash metal song. And it was amazing. It proves the point that I've been saying all along that Beethoven really was the first metalhead. So, um case in point, Ex Mortis kind of proved that last night. Um, so definitely a fantastic way to open the night. So following them came uh, Entombed AD. And like I said, I don't know a lot about Entombed AD. I know Entombed, but not so much Entombed AD. Um, but to be fair, it honestly probably didn't matter because they just came out and just the same, you know, they brought out their you know, their death metal, their thrash kind of sound that they have and just, you know, tore it up. I mean, that's the thing about these two bands that, you know, opened up. They both had shredders in their bands. Um, and anytime you can get shredders going, you see the mosh pits forming, you know, the, the lead singer, he, <laughs> a very funny guy. Um, I can't remember his, his name. Um, but he is extremely, I mean, he just, he, he has that look of kind of old school metal to him, not to mention just, the perfect vocals for a good death metal set. Um, he remarked that there were, you know, three circle pits forming in the venue. And the Ogden is not a big venue. It's a small venue and it actually is tiered. So you've got the the pit, you've got the first tier and a second tier, and then you got behind the sound stage or behind the um, sound check area, you've got another kind of level as well as a balcony. But there were definitely circle pits forming in the middle tier as well as in the pit. Um, I wasn't in either of those cause I just can't, <laughs> I can't do that anymore. But, um, it was just, I mean, they, they definitely got the crowd going. They got, you know, there was a lot of energy, a lot of liveliness. Um, I didn't recognize any of the songs, but I didn't have to because it's, it was just a fantastic set. And, you know, they were great, you know, great sound, um, great speed, great energy, um, definitely getting us all pumped up and ready to go for a Monomarth. So um, I was extremely pleased with the opening two bands um, at this show because, like I said, I didn't know too much about them going in, but I know them now. <laughs> if it's not obvious now. Um, so then let's get into 
Amana Marth, the band I went to see. Um, I've seen Amana Marth once before. Um, it was on their Surtur Rising tour um, back in 2011. Um, that was a cool show because it was just them, and they played basically the entire Surtur Rising in it. They, they played that first, took a break, and then came back and then played a full set of, you know, kind of their older back catalog. Um, so we got a hell of a show back then. Um, obviously with multiple bands here, they're not going to get that, but they did play quite a bit from their new album, uh, Yom's Viking, uh, which was, you know, I haven't gotten into that album as much. There's a lot of new music out right now, so I haven't been able to really give everything the time it deserves, but it is a, you know, another solid Amon Amarth album with, you know, a couple of really strong songs and they played a few of those last night, but, um, when they came out, you know, they're, they're, they got a lot more theatrical, which, I mean, it just kind of goes to prove Amon Amarth is a headlining caliber band. They do have the the sound, the energy, the rapport with the audience. I mean, Johan Haig is, he really is a, you know, old school type of front man of just, you know, he dominates the stage. He is, you know, that prima donna singer in a way, but he does it in his own, you know, very fun, very snarky way. I mean, he's, he's just an entertaining person to, you know, engage with. Um, but they added some theatrics too. You know, the stage was set up in kind of this like helmet, you know, this Viking helmet with, you know, horns sticking out. Uh, the drummer was on top of the helmet while, um, there were these kind of steps on each side of it, you know, so that they could, you know, go up and, you know, do their synchronized head banging, which, <laughs> They are good at. Um, Amon Amarth is one of the better bands when it comes to synchronized headbanging. So, um, <clears throat> but when they came out, they opened with um, "Pursuit of Vikings," which I thought was kind of surprising that they would open up with um, something from you know the way back catalog. And as disappointed as I am that they only played one song from "Fate of Norns," it at least you know definitely got the crowd in the mood for it. And, you know, the crowd was singing along with the lyrics, you know, the refrain especially. And, you know, that's, you know, he kind of, <laughs> Johan kind of stopped. And he's like, you guys know this stuff, don't you? And, you know, got everybody singing. It's just kind of that, like, it's a good way to get the audience into the show right away. Um, playing a song that everybody knows, having them sing along, get in, enter, you know, get energized with it. They certainly did that right off the bat with the Pursuit of Vikings. Um, great way to open the show. Um, they followed that up with um, something from their um, previous album, Deceiver of the Gods, um, When Loke Falls. When Loke Falls. Um, that one was um, definitely a good just segue into like, you know, giving, you know, starting to get the energy into the, you know, the the room as, it, you know, into the, the venue right there. So um I'm not going to go through the entire set list here, but I mean, again, they played a lot from Yom's Viking, which, you know, like I said, I haven't listened to it a lot, but the ones, you know, the songs that they did play that I, you know, recognize and certainly appreciated, First Kill, um, that was, you know, a <laughs> solid, solid um, song that they played. At Dawn's First Light it was one of those that they, you know, that that's one that can really also get the crowd kind of going. Um, one that I really truly enjoyed from the new album that they um played uh 1000 burning arrows that one really i mean and that was cool because they had one of the things they added to their kind of theatrical part of it was they have these two viking warriors who um you know would come out during certain songs and one of them they had you know sword and shield and they would you know you know whack at each other there another one they came out with spears you know and they would you know spears and standards and they would you know kind of like you know, menacingly look at the crowd and nothing. But in this one, Thousand Burning Arrows, they came out with bows and arrows. <laughs> and they were basically sitting up there, you know, with their, you know, bows like cocked, just kind of like looking out over the crowd, which, you know, the nervous person in me is like, when one of those things goes off and kills somebody, this is definitely going to be a death metal show. But, <laughs> um, but it was just good to have kind of like a little bit more theatric, you know, to it. But, um, 1000 Burning Arrows was definitely a good song. Um, in their, uh, encore, they did, um, Raise Your Horns, which I know they did that specifically because this is going to become a staple of a Monomarth moving forward. This song, it's, it's, you know, when I say Raise Your Horns, it's not just Raise Your Horns, but it's also Raise Your, you know, Horn of Mead, of Beer, you know, of like whatever alcoholic beverage you choose because, it's going to be that kind of like 
bringing together drinking song. This is, we are a, you know, kind of a Monomarth family, you know, kind of song. Um, so that was very entertaining to hear that. Um, but, um, yeah, so overall the, the Yom's Viking songs were, you know, good. Um, but what, where my heart really lies is with their back catalog. And especially like I, I got into a Monomarth when, um, Fate of Norns came out. So that was like my first exposure to it. And after Fate of Norns, they did see kind of a stylistic shift, but, as, but Fate of Norns also was the one that really got them into some mainstream with Pursuit of Vikings, with the song Fate of Norns. Um, not to mention the rest of that album is just amazing. But after, after that, they started to get kind of a little stylistic shift, but, but where my heart really lies is with some of that earlier stuff with, Fate of Norns, Avenger, um, One Sent from Golden Hall, and especially Versus the World, which is probably my favorite Amon Amarth album. On that note, they played two songs from Versus the World. Um, they played Thousand Years of Oppression, which is just a great, like, almost ballad, but it, it's one of those songs that reminds me of why I love Amon Amarth so much, is because they are storytellers. I mean, they do have kind of that folky storytelling aspect to them and they did that a lot more then than they do now but especially with a song like thousand years of oppression that's where you know you really get that like storytelling aspect to it um which i absolutely loved and they did a great job with it death and fire that's always just a good energizing song especially um after they played destroyer of the universe um from search rising and um yeah they uh they really had the fire theme going there for a little bit, but it, um, I mean, that's a good way to energize people too, is just get those like kind of older songs, get, you know, get the ones that, you know, have a lot of energy. Destroyer of the Universe, that was a lot of fun. That, they, I mean, that one was just insane. They, I mean, it's one of those like really fast songs, really aggressive songs. And so you expect people to just, you know, kind of, you know, circle up and just start pummeling each other, which is what they did, um, which is always entertaining to see. Um, what else did they play? Um, Father of the Wolf, that was a great, they did a great song with that one. Um, one of my favorites from the night was Father of the Wolf. Um, it's, it was really hard to pick a favorite because, you know, some of those songs have been so endearing to me for so long. Um, like Death and Fire, uh, Runes to My Memory, another one that, like, has been, you know, a part of, like, you know, how much I love Amon Amar for so long, Cry of the Blackbirds, Twilight of the Thunder God. Those are all songs that I've listened to for so long that, you know, just hearing them live, hearing that energy, like feeling the bass and all that, it really does, you know, it's just, it's so exciting and so, you know, so joyful to hear those songs. Um, but Father of the Wolf definitely was a solid song. War of the Gods, and they actually ended their set with Victorious March. Now, they came back for three songs to do um, the um, encore, basically. They did a three-song encore, but when they ended their set, they ended it with Victorious March off of One Cent from Golden Hall, so that was awesome, too, because that's another song that's just, like, so epic and powerful, and it, you know, it, it really, if you're not a fan of Amon Amarth, you know, it's songs like that that'll really get you hooked, because they... You know, anymore they might seem kind of gimmicky because Amon Amarth is one of the divisive bands out there. There's a lot of people who absolutely adore them, and then there's a lot of people who absolutely despise them because they are a little bit gimmicky. They're not Viking metal per se, not like an enslaved or something. They're not really folk metal per se either. They're kind of this like melodic death metal with folk metal elements with Viking metal themes. I mean, so they 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 kind of don't fit into some of these like narrower categories but they are so much fun and that's why i absolutely love them you know their music sometimes might sound a little bit you know there's a few songs where it, you, you can kind of predict what they're going to play but at the same time it's just so entertaining and so much fun to listen to and you know johan Haig really does get the crowd into it and get them excited um but um, when they did the encore too, they, um, brought out, um, Lars from Entombed AD, lead singer to, um, sing along with Johan on, uh, Guardians of Asgard, because he did that on the album itself, um, on Twilight of the Thunder God. So to hear him come out and do that, it was just awesome. And it, it's, it's always good when you see, 
when you go to a show and you can have that, like the two bands kind of come together for at least a song because, you know, especially two bands who've been around for a long time. Amon Amarth has been around for a long time and Tombed was around for a long time. So it's good to see those bands coming together and really like, you know, uniting in metal. That's, that's what metal is all about. It's bringing people together and then pushing them away in a circle pit. But, um, so, you know, and, and, you know, just some of the other highlights, obviously they ended with Twilight of the Thunder God. It's probably their most popular song. And, you know, they ended with that one, you know, to close out the night. And it's a good way to, you know, send people out. Um, they also played Cry of the Blackbirds, which I love that song. That's probably one of my favorite Amon Amar songs. So anytime I get to hear that, it's just kind of that good, like, you know, battle song, you know, it's a very energetic song and, you know, really gets your, get your feelings up. So a lot, a lot of good stuff. I mean, they had a 19 song set, so, um, a lot of good stuff. And, um, even though, you know, it kind of got off to a shaky start, you know, late, uh, a late start, it, you know, I was just, you know, blown away by it as, as I hope to be from Amon Amarth. Um, my favorite song from their set, it's really, that one's really tough. Um, cause I could either go with, um, Runes to My Memory or Father of the Wolf. Both of those were just really excellent songs and just the way the crowd got into it, the way the band, you know, presented it, it was just, they were both extremely well done songs and just brought that energy to, to the crowd. Um, but overall, I mean, I, you know, I was absolutely thrilled with, with the results of this show. Um, great, great set, you know, great lineup too. just having these three bands fitting, they fit so well together and to have just, you know, it was just a fantastic night. So I was absolutely pleased with, um, my experience last night, seeing Amon Amarth, Entombed AD, and Ex Mortis. Um, so that's my review. Um, thanks again for watching. Um, I will see you again next time very soon. Got some more concerts coming up this month. Um, so that's my review of Amon Amarth at the Ogden last night because I was there last night. See, ticket proves it. All right. Bye-bye. See you later.